Hey friends, I'm Shauna and welcome to Crafting with My Friends, where we share our love of crafting and creating with each other and the world. So, I'm super excited to be sharing my very first video tutorial with y'all. So, today's project is going to be this oversized crop sweater. This sweater is super easy to style, dress it up or down, and it's great for fall or winter. Throughout the video, you're going to see pop-up inserts with full step-by-step -step instructions that you can pause and read along, or just play the video so you can get instructions in my lovely voice. Now, if you're ready, let's get into it. Here are the supplies you'll need for this project. An 8mm hook, a 10mm hook, scissors, a yarn needle, stitch markers, and a measuring tape. Those were your supplies. Now for the yarn. The yarn I used was the Joanne Fabric House Brand Big Twist Classic in the color beige. It's a bulky five weight acrylic yarn with 690 yards or 630 meters per skein and I used one full skein and 10 ounces of a second. If you have a preferred bulky five weight yarn you'd like to use, do so, but keep in mind all five weight yarn is not created equal. To begin, we'll start with part one, which is the cuff. Let's make a slip knot. Take your yarn and wrap your short end around two fingers. Take two fingers and go between the loop you've created to pull up another strand of yarn. Draw in tight to create another loop. Insert your hook into the loop, draw into the hook, and you've created a slip knot. Start by chaining 11 chains to create the height of your cuff. 11 chains will count as the height for your cuff for all sizes. To create a single crochet, we'll insert our hook into the second chain from the hook. Yarn over, pull through the chain, yarn over, and pull through both loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through the chain, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. One more time. Go into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through the chain, yarn over, and pull through both loops on the hook. Continue to single crochet in every chain across. Once you've reached the end of your chain, you should have 10 single crochets. Chain one and turn your work for row two. For row two, we'll be working slip stitches. Insert your hook into the first stitch of the row. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and through the loop on the hook. For the next eight stitches, we'll be working slip stitches into the back loop only of every stitch. Insert your hook into the back loop of the next stitch 
yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. Going to the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. Going to the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. Continue to work slip stitches in the back loop only of every stitch across until you've reached the last stitch of the row. Once you've reached the final stitch of the row, insert your hook into the full stitch, make a slip stitch, chain one, and turn your work for row three. Row 3 will be similar to row 2, except we'll be working single crochets in this row. So insert your hook into the first stitch of the row and make a single crochet. Next, single crochet into the back loop only of the next 8 stitches. crocheting into the back loop of your stitches and alternating slip stitches and single crochets in every row will create a ribbing effect for your cuff. Once you've reached the end of your cuff, you'll see what I mean. Once you've reached the final stitch of the row, single crochet into the full stitch, chain one, and turn your work for row four. Pause here to determine how many rows you'll make for your size. I'm making a size large, so I'm ending my cuff at row 28, and since row 28 is an even number row, I'm ending with slip stitches. Once you've reached the end of the row, chain one, Pull up a strand long enough to connect your cuff to your sleeve, cut, pull through, and tighten to fasten off. Congratulations, you've created a cuff. And as you can see, you've created ribbing by alternating your slip stitches and single crochets per row. Repeat these steps for cuff number two. Moving on to part two, which is the sleeve. Please switch to your 10 millimeter hook. Pause here to determine how many chains you'll need for your size. Row two begins our increased rows. We will be increasing in the first and the last stitches of every row from row two. We'll also be using half double crochet slip stitches in row two. To create a half double crochet slip stitch, yarn over your hook 
and insert into the first stitch of the row. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through both loops on your hook. Repeat these steps into the same stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through both loops, whoops, both loops on your hook. Yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through both loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through both loops on your hook. And continue to work half double crochet slip stitches in every stitch across until you've reached the last stitch of the row. Once you've reached the last stitch of the row, half double crochet slip stitch two times into the same stitch. Chain one and turn your work for row three. For row three, we'll continue to increase in the first and the last stitches of the row. For row three, we'll be working half double crochet herringbone stitches. To create half double crochet herringbone stitches, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the first stitch of the row, yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the first loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the first loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch and the first loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the first loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Continue to work half double crochet herringbone stitches in every stitch across until you've reached the last stitch of the row. Once you've reached the last stitch of the row, half double crochet herringbone stitch two times into the same stitch, chain one, and turn your work for row four. Once you've reached the end of row 25, make two half double crochet herringbone stitches into the same stitch. Chain one, turn your work, and that ends our increases. For row 26, you'll work one half double crochet slip stitch into the first stitch and every stitch across. 
no more increases. Pause here to determine the total amount of rows you'll need for your size. I've reached row 35 and I'm ending my row in half double crochet herringbone stitches. Once you've reached the end of the row, Chain one, pull up a strand of yarn long enough to connect your sleeve to your body, cut, and pull through. and tighten to fasten off. One sleeve down and now you can notice the back and forth motion that the herringbone stitches and the half double crochet slip stitches have made for a pretty cool texture. You'll also notice how your sleeve has increased from your wrist to your elbow. Please repeat these steps for sleeve number two. We've made it to part three, which is the body. Pause here to determine how many chains you'll need for your size. For row two, we're going to work one half double crochet slip stitch in the first stitch of the row and every stitch across. Your body pieces are in a rectangular shape so there's no need to increase or decrease it. Just one stitch per stitch in every row from front to end. Coming up on the end of row two, and I'm still working half double crochet slip stitches in every stitch across. Once you've ended the row, chain one and turn your work for row three. Row three will be working half double crochet herringbone stitches in the first stitch of the row and every stitch across.
once you've reached the end of your row, chain one and turn your work for row four. Pause here to determine the amount of rows you'll need for your size. I've reached row 33 and I'm ending the row with half double crochet herringbone stitches. Once you've reached the end of your row, chain one, drop a strand of yarn long enough to connect your body at the shoulders, cut and pull through and tighten to fasten off. Repeat these steps for the second panel of your body. In part four, we're bringing it all together. Hang in there, y'all. We're almost there. Pause here to determine how many stitches to mark off for your size. Now it's time to connect the body at the shoulder. I've started by counting out how many stitches I'll need to connect my body pieces together and mark them off with the stitch marker, leaving the middle part open for the neck hole. We'll start by lying our body panels right sides together. Taking the strands you cut off at the end of your pieces, get your yarn needle and we'll sew our body pieces together stitch by stitch by using the whip stitch method. You do the whip stitch by inserting your needle into one side of the body and exiting out of the other. Nothing fancy, just in and out all the way across. Being sure to insert your needle through the stitches and making sure your stitches are lined up evenly. Once you've reached your stitch marker, complete your whip stitch and check to see if your stitching is too loose or too tight. Mine were a little loose, so I took it upon myself to tighten it up just a little bit by tugging on the strands. Don't make it too tight or you'll create puckering or bunching in your work. Once your whip stitch is complete, you'll notice that you've created somewhat of a seamless join. Take your yarn needle and complete these steps for your other shoulder.
I've run out of stitch markers, so I'm using scrap pieces of yarn to mark my shoulder points on my body. And it is quite fine to use whatever you have as stitch markers if you don't have actual stitch markers, just as long as they can be easily removed from your piece. I've already marked the shoulder end of my sleeve at the midpoint. Then I'll connect my midpoint of my sleeve to the shoulder point of my body pieces. Making sure that the sleeve and body pieces are facing right sides together. Once your points are connected, Make sure both pieces are flat and even. Using the strand of yarn you cut at the end of your row, thread your yarn through your needle, and connect your sleeve and body pieces by whip stitching through the stitch of the sleeve and the row end spaces of the body pieces. Making sure that your pieces are evenly matched so that you have a clean and even join. Continue to whip stitch until you've reached where you connected the midpoint of your sleeve and the shoulder point of your body pieces. Once you've reached your stitch marker, check to make sure that your pieces are joined evenly. If they are even, your stitch markers will match up still. If not, they will be off center. Remove your stitch markers and continue to stitch to the other end of your work. Once you've joined your sleeve and your body pieces, you'll notice a very even and seamless join, just like with your shoulders.
to connect your cuff to your sleeve. Match your cuff to the wrist end of your sleeve. Line your pieces right sides together. Using the strand you cut at the end of your row, whip stitch through the row end spaces of your cuff and through the stitches of the wrist end of your sleeve. Once you've joined your cuff to your sleeve, fold your cuff right sides facing, making sure to line it up evenly. Take a strand of yarn and whip stitch through the stitches of your cuff ends. Once you've closed your cuff, continue to join up the sleeve for about two stitches.
Cut your yarn and fasten off. Flip your cuff right side out and you're all connected. Looking good, right? But hang in there because we still got a couple more steps to go. And finally, part five, the finishing touches. Fold your sweater wrong sides together. Join your sleeves with the stitch marker by the first and the last stitches of your final increase row. Take a strand of yarn and make a slip stitch. Insert your hook into the first point of your sleeve and chain one. single crochet into the same space and single crochet in every row space of the sleeve. Once you've come to your body piece, single crochet in every stitch across. What you see me doing is taking my ends from the strands of yarn that I cut and single crocheting over them as I'm working across my body.
continue to stitch into the stitches of your body and the row in spaces of your sleeve all the way around and once you've reached your stitch marker you're going to remove it That was tough. And continue to stitch in every row space of the sleeve and every stitch of the body. Once you've made it all the way around to your starting point, remove your stitch marker Why is this so hard? And slip stitch into the first single crochet that you made at the beginning of the round. Chain one, cut your yarn, and fasten off. Make a slip knot. Insert your hook into either joining point of your neck hole. And chain one. Single crochet into the same stitch. 
and in every stitch all the way around your neck hole. Once you've reached the end of your round, slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Chain one, cut your yarn and fasten off. Take your yarn needle and weave in your ends. and cut off any loose strands and you're done and there you have it pretty easy right I really hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial and have fun making this sweater if so give me a thumbs up comment and share and if you like me and you want to come back subscribe also, let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see next or email me your ideas for our next project. Stay tuned because there's more in store. Until next time, friends, see ya.